Yo, what up? This is the scientist of sound, Kwame, and you know I got soul. Peace. All right, Kwame. So I want to start talking about Vivian Green. She's an artist you've got signed to your Make Noise label. You produced her whole upcoming album, Vivian. Just talk about, um, you know, the work you did on that project. Well, Vivid, the name of the album is called Vivid. It comes out August 7th. And um, very interesting album because I think that Vivian has two types of, uh, two types of fan base. You have the the mainstream listener the, and and the mainstream listener is somebody that is on the radio listening on the radio whether they're driving home driving to work or just riding around and they hear whatever the popular song is and they attach themselves to that particular song so in Vivian's case her particular song would be emotional roller coaster or gotta go gotta leave and that was the records that were heavily pushed by Sony when she first got signed and uh, I think 03 if I'm not mistaken and 03 and 05 and um that mainstream audience knows that and then don't then you you have a core audience that knows that album those first two albums and then her indie albums on E1 and they know album cuts singles singles that didn't do as big as the first two or whatever but they know her 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 core music and vivid the album that I'm producing I'm trying to bridge those two audiences together and also attract a new audience. And a lot of the older audience, they know her for for a one a unidimensional thing. It's like the the girl that can get you through some heartbreak at a particular time. But they don't know the funny girl, they don't know the jokey girl, they don't know the 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 the, the serious girl, they don't know the argumentative girl, they don't know all the different facets that that Vivian is as a writer and as an artist. So my job, and hopefully I, I think I did a great job at it, but, you know, it's up to the people. Um, my job was to bring those different facets out. And, and, and Vivian will tell you, like, the, the, the title, Vivid, is a root on her word, the V-I-V-I, and which means full of life and, and full of expression and color and stuff like that. So we do have the songs to get you through some things, but we also have songs to make you laugh and songs to uh, make you reflect and, and, and songs to, you know, spiritual songs, things of that nature. So it's just trying to, you know, like a diamond, you, you, you hold it up to the light. You see all the different, uh, uh, the vivid lights that it, that it casts in all its dimensions. So that's the whole point of the album. I sound all metaphysical and shit. <laughs> and now the current single, Get Right Back to My Baby, it's gaining steam, picking up at radio, you know, yeah. starting to do well. And first of all, I just got to say, we appreciate that you gave that to us earlier, allowed us to premiere yeah, that, and yeah. we really appreciate that look. But I was reading something interesting that um, she kind of fought you on the single a little bit when oh, you were creating it. I not want to no. record that record <laughs> Talk about it. nothing. The funny thing is, you know, I want to thank you guys for, for dropping that and, and, and being the first to to post it but literally a year ago we were in the studio and we were recording it wasn't the first song we recorded but it was one of the the dopest songs we had recorded at the time and I was like you haven't been around for damn near three years people need to know that you still exist you know you can't be in a space where you've been gone all this time and expect things to be the same when you get back it's just not that way it's like a dude being in jail for three years he gets out of jail with no contact to the real world there's a new iphone out there's new applications on the computers there's so many new things that happen so I was like yo let's do this record and she didn't wasn't used to singing over an up tempo she wasn't used to singing over anything with any kind of sample in it um <coughs> excuse me and so she was like, I don't think I don't think this is me. I don't think this is me. And I think it was because it wasn't in her box that she put herself in in all these other albums, which isn't a bad box, but she put herself in a comfort zone. And I think the thing about an artist, to make an artist, you got to expand your artistry. So I, I we did this record. We recorded it. I think, you know, she'll tell you, I, had, I made the track. I, I wrote the hook. I had to sing the hook and I had to convince her that this should be the hook. Then once she sang the hook over and then she filled in with the with the um, verses and stuff and we came up with a dope record. 
And then after it was done, I mixed it. And I was like, I'm dropping this thing online. I, she, I didn't even tell her. She was <laughs> pissed. How could you do that? Da, da, da. And at the same time, we reached out to Frankie Beverly. Because, you know, I didn't know what, what you know, we didn't have no kind of, we didn't know what this record was going to do. We didn't have no deal. She was in between deals. You know, uh, we didn't know. I was just around to do one or two songs. I I didn't know what was going to happen. But, um, you know, we had to find, we went through his daughter. We had to, you know, we found anybody who knew him. I went through a tour manager, a daughter, all this kind of stuff to get his blessing and, and, and go through the channels. And things kind of fell in at the same time. And it literally took, um, well, it didn't take a year, but if you count now, and then it took that groundswell of people talking about it, people accepting Vivian for a new sound or, or a, a different facet of her sound um, and accepting all of that. And that helped achieve the situation that I'm in now. You know, you know, a whole album was recorded. And honestly, you know, we were shopping labels we were going to labels like hey check this out you know and we were getting deal offers you know it was it was dope people were offering us deals and then um a situation came in front of me like you know why don't you just put your own thing out you know people knew that I was toying you know I was doing real real independent stuff with the make noise label but to have capital records jump on board with it that was not expected and and it helped propel the record to where it's going. You know, we were number one most added radio. You know, we're in the top 15. You know, we, we didn't think about no charts right. and how many rec labels or stations were going to add us and getting the video to Centric and this one and that one. And, I, you know, we didn't think about all of that. We were just like, yo, man, we just got a dope song, yeah. man, just to see people like it. So talk about this, you know, label situation you have now. You mentioned you were going to do some some indie stuff with Make Noise, but now you've you've got the partnership. So what can we look forward to in the future um, of, for Make Noise? Make Noise is the best way. I'm I'm okay. I'm a superhero geek. <laughs> and I got mostly I explain things in superhero terms. So Make Noise is like. Baby Superman. When his father, jor -El, had this kid, he knew he was about to launch this kid over into <laughs> to Earth. And he knew that when he launched his son into Earth, <clears throat> that the, the potential that the son has is going to, you know, be, you know, incredible. A limitless potential. <clears throat> and that's how I feel about Make Noise. Where it's still like, like that baby... Kyle L, that baby Superman, is like, I know that there's so many things I want to do with this label and with this, uh, uh, um, this company, just the company make noise. So I've been planning this in my mind for years, um, over 10 years. You know, when everybody says you need to get a five-year plan, a 10-year plan, 20, you know, I'm on my five-year plan right, right now. And the first step, you know, I don't want to give everything away, but the first step is to hand select the artists that I work with um, and do collabs, meaning I prefer singer, songwriter, or rapper, rhyme writer, artists that could connect to what I do as a producer. And we do these collabs. It's like you know, I wanted to feel like a joint effort between me and the artist, me as a producer and as, and, and, and the artist, you know, as as a creative outlet. You know, so I don't think I'm that dude that's like, yo, send me some beats, man. My, you know, this one needs that track. You know, I'm not really on it like that. You know, this is what I do, and I want to link up with what I do to what that other artist does. And whether it's R&B, whether it's alternative hip-hop. So for on the R&B side, we have Vivian Green. On the alternative hip-hop, we have Beyond Belief. Um, you know, I'm, I'm most likely going to do a project as well, but it's not like Quam's coming back with the old-school sound and he's going to be rapping. No, I, you know, 
my musicality, I can focus my musicality and put it on one album, and you never know what you're going to get. You could get, you know, me spitting some verses. You can get Vivian singing some some, some verses. You could get, you know, anybody. It could be Eric Robeson. It could be Algebra. It could, whoever. It could be anybody that that comes through and as a collective and works on 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 the project that you know that I would want to do and and for me I'm more of a visual artist so I like to be on stage I want to be on stage with all my drum machines and 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 live instrumentation the, the way I make a record I want to bring that to the stage so that would be if you know when I do my thing that's what you're going to expect to see and then as time goes on you know you moving into we just make noise just did a, a, a soundtrack uh, uh, it was a Christmas film for Lifetime called Seasons of Love, and we did that uh, for this last Christmas season. And you know, working on other film projects as well. So it's going to be multifaceted, um, multifaceted types of music projects coming out. But to sum it all up, it's basically me as a producer, the artist as an artist, and we're coming together and putting out quality work. I can't, what I can't do. And what I probably won't do right now is do something so trendy and gimmicky just to get that paper. Like, I can't find the next whoever down south with the new dance and I put out some snap beat, whatever, some trap beat, and you never hear from that person the next day. I want to make music that people believe in. I want to work with artists that people believe in. I want to work with artists when they see them, when they hear them, when they... It could be... I may just... My first set, couple of artists may be people you already know. But I want the audience to say, all right, he's working with Vivian Green. We know she can sing. We know he can produce. And whoever else down the line that I work with... Um, on a long-term or a short-term situation, I want people to feel confident that the project is going to be that interesting. You know, God willing, 100,000 records, 200, a million records could get sold. Great, if that's possible. But rest assured, it's going to be a dope record. It's going to be dope music on top of it. And when you see that artist, it's going to be a dope show. You know, you know, I try to take pride in that. It's like quality control. I take a lot of pride in, in the project. And just last thing for you, I'm just curious, you know, you're a producer who's had success for many years now. The landscape has kind of changed, you know, social media has made producers basically coming out of the woodwork, offering beats for free, you know, offering to do whatever. So has that made it more competitive for you? Has it, has it made it more of a challenge for you as you, you know, try to get placements now or, or try to, you know, work with artists? Well, that's the whole point of Make Noise for me. The main point is, if I do not like the way the game is going, I got to make my own game. So Make Noise is my own game. I'm on my own game board right now because, you know, I don't, I, I understand the process that a lot of producers are going through. 99 cent beats and, or $99 beats or free beats. Yo, man, do what you got to do because sometimes... The ends are greater than, than the means. Like, you don't need that up, big, giant, upfront fee if you're guaranteed a dope single. But if you're just giving your beats away and somebody's throwing it on a mixtape and it's floating around the internet and then you could tell a bunch of your friends that it got 10,000 hits on SoundCloud or wherever the heck, yo, whatever, man. That don't, that's never going to feed your grandkids. You know, I make, I have a catalog of music. I've been making music since 1989. So my catalog, when I'm not here, my son's going to be able to, to eat. My grandchildren will be able to eat because I've established a catalog of music. I don't know when you're giving stuff away for free. How do I know what you're giving away? You could be giving away your publishing. You can give away all your rights. You're just putting, you know, I know artists that come out with hit records and they don't even know who the producer is. They may, you tell them the name before they say it in the interview, but they don't know them. They've never met them. They found the beat online somewhere.